work on how to tie a bowl in today and how it relates to tree work, arboriculture. Well, bowling is one of the most practical knots we tie. Uh, it's fairly simple to tie, but it's not intuitive. A lot of people have trouble tying it. And in arboriculture, we almost always tie Yosemite finish. And so here's what the finish knot looks like. Right there, a bowling. And it's a very, <clears throat> very uh, sturdy knot doesn't come undone, especially with the Yosemite finish. Uh, one of the detractors is that it weakens the rope by 50% because of this tight round turn here. All the fibers are stretched here, so when this is put under a lot of load, it tends to break right there on the round turn. But let me show you the, <clears throat> the three parts of the bowling, just a little slower here. The first part is the round turn. And now you're going to notice I'm not going to move my left hand. And I'm going to always move in a counterclockwise motion. So a counterclockwise round turn. And then a counterclockwise loop. You want to keep a distinction between the round turn and the loop. You can leave the loop bigger. That's a good way to keep a distinction. Then the tail is going to come under the standing part of the line and create a yoke, like a yoke around an oxen's neck. Okay, so you see it looks like a yoke around an oxen's neck. And then the Yosemite finish, you notice that the tail of the bowline is on the inside of the loop. That's, if you keep your counterclockwise motion, it will always be on the inside of the loop. Come around the outside of the loop, back down through the middle, and run up parallel with the standing part of the line. And that's your Yosemite finish. So your round turn is mirrored by this Yosemite finish, and the tail runs parallel with the standing part of the line right up through the yoke. So everything's very nice and neat. And you can pull this knot sideways. Without the assembly finish, it technically could work loose in a situation where it was being loaded and unloaded on a, on a side load like this. So the assembly finish just makes this a very, very secure knot. So once again, let's try to slow this down a little bit. You got a line, you probably got two feet of line out here. You're going to tie a round turn. Do not move your left hand. Pinch it between your thumb and forefinger. Make a counterclockwise loop. Come under the standing part of the line and back down the hole. There's a little rabbit analogy that's old and famous. The rabbit comes out of his hole, around the tree, and back down the hole. And then you're going to come around and back up through the yoke with the Yosemite finish. Now you'll notice I've been demonstrating here kind of the three parts of tying a knot. You're going to tie the knot. That's the motion of actually tying the knot. Then you're going to dress the knot. I'm dressing it now, I'm making it neat. I'm not going to tighten it all the way up because I'm going to do the assembly finish. And when I got the assembly finish done and I dress it up, then I'm going to set the knot. Tie, dress, and set. And that's important with a lot of knots. They'll maybe get tangled in, a, in an incorrect manner if you try to set them too quickly. And so it's important to dress the knot and make it neat. And there you've got it, a bowling with the assembly finish. <clears throat> now let's look at a little variation of that. You might, you might, you know, make make a bowling uh, to tie onto a, a piece or something. But you can, if this were a tree branch way up in the tree, let's say there's 50 feet of line here between this point and myself. And so the rope's coming down to the ground, and I want to 
I want to secure this limb up in the tree. Maybe I want to pull the tree over with, with a loader or a truck or, or a winch. And so I want a line attached in the top of the tree. To make a running bowling, I'm going to make that round turn, counterclockwise round turn. The loop, I'm going to come around counterclockwise and I'm going to capture the opposing side of the line. I'm going to come up the bottom side of my hole, under the standing part of the line, and back down. And if we pull this through, <clears throat> get enough of this through, we can then come around the loop and back up through the yoke. Now you notice it's, it's more difficult in some ways. I, get, I didn't dress very well there. You can see the importance of dressing right there. So come around and back up. And there's a, a bowling that's captured this opposing side of the line. That's a running bowling. And we can run that all the way up to the tree as far as it needs to go. So once again, let's do that. I, I flustered it a little bit with a poorly dressed knot. So here you go. You're going to make your, your round turn. You can come around. I got a lot of tail here. And come up through that round turn. Create a yoke. I'm going to come on the outside of the loop and back up through the yoke for a Yosemite finish. And then this will run all the way up to the top of the tree or wherever you're around. And you can also use this as an anchor hitch. If the tree was, if the branch was coming down or if the rope was coming down from the top of the tree, you can anchor it at the base of the tree with a running bowling. And that's a good method, you know, a good application of that running bowling. Now I'm going to use a variation of the bowling. It's actually a different kind of knot. It's called a sheet bend. And we may have a rope coming down from a tree and the climber wants a second line to come up into the tree. You're going to make a bite on the rope. You're just going to take a bite. This could be anywhere along the rope. In this case, it's close to the end, but we're just going to make a bite. We're going to hang a rope over that. Get this up here so we don't have extra weight. Just going to hang the rope over there. Bring the tail behind it, the opposing side of the line, and that's going to create a round turn. And then you're going to make a bite on the tail and bring it through this original bite. And you're going to dress it and set it. This is a slippery sheet bend, but you can see that it's actually a variation of the bowling. We have a round turn and we have the yoke. We just don't have a loop because it, you know, it's two different ropes. So this is a bowl and tied with two different ropes, which is a sheet bend. And the beauty of this is that the climber can pull those ropes apart and he's got one rope in each hand. So it's a very good way to attach two ropes together and they don't even have to be the same diameter. Now you can speed this up a little bit you can put your hand through this loop, go around the standing part of the second line, and pull a bite right through that loop. And by doing that, you've just made it a smooth, simple process to get that knot. It pulls right apart. So let's try that again. We hang it over, we can go through that bite, 
come behind and we can grab that other that tail and pull a bite through so rather than having to feed that individually around itself you just make your hand travel the same path in reverse so you come through and then around and then pull that tail up and through and dress it up tight so that it doesn't slip out on the way up and when that gets up in the tree you just pull the tail and it comes apart now I show you that knot in relation with the bowlin to show you the next knot and that is a flying bowlin so a flying bowlin is often used in the tree to tie off to a limb that you're going to cut free and send down. Again, you make a bite, just like on the sheet bend. And I can grab that bite with my thumb and forefinger. Again, I'm not going to move my left hand. The entire knot is going to be tied with the tail. We make a bite with the tail. We hold that bite. We're going to make a round turn, a counterclockwise round turn. We're going to feed it over that bite, snug it up. Now you're going to put a bite through the bite. And now my thumb's in position here to pull this tight and dress this up. Dress it up and set it. Now you'll notice there's a twist in this line. I'm going to untwist that and cinch this up to the limb that I want to cut loose. So now I can cut that, loot, that limb loose, it goes down to the ground, maybe this is through a pulley, right? It goes down to the ground, the ground guy gets it, and he just has to pull the tail, and then pull the line, and it comes right off. So once again, let's look at that. This is taking the principles from a slippery sheet bend and applying them to a, a type of bowling. So we're going to make a bite and put it under the opposing side of the line. Then we're going to make a round turn, and this round turn, when we put it into place by sliding it over this, this bite, we're creating the loop of the bullet by doing that. We just created the loop. This is the loop of the bullet, and it captures the opposing side of the line. Then we're bringing a bite through the first bite that we made. And then we're going to pull that tight. Tie, dress, and set. Now we've got a twist in the line. We're going to untwist that twist, cinch it up, and we're going to set the knot for a second time. We have to set the tying of the knot. Now we have to set the hitch against the, the limb that we're going to cut loose. You can cut that loose. It rides down on a pulley to the ground. The ground guy just has to pull the tail and then pull the standing part of the line and it comes right off. So that's a flying bowlin. Now there's a couple other applications to a bowlin that we use tying a bite now that we've introduced a bite. We can make a three foot bite on the rope. And we can tie a bowline with this bite. And we're going to treat this bite as a single piece of rope. So this is tying a bowline with a bite. So the bite is a single piece of rope in your mind. You make your round turn. Again, don't move your left hand. Come up through that round turn. You're going to come under the standing part of the line and go back down the same round turn. Don't get confused with this loop that you made. Now on this bowling with a bite, we can slow down on our dressing of this knot and get all three of these loops the same length. We got the, the two loops that were the original loop that we made and then the tail is actually closed and loop. 
There's no reason to tie a Yosemite finish here because the tail is a closed end loop. If we're going to attach into here with a carabiner, we can just go through all three and we capture all of them. And the application of this knot might be, you know, maybe the far end of the line is tied up in a tree and we're going to pull on that line to, to pull the tree over once we cut it with a chainsaw. And so you're, maybe you have, you know, a 200 foot rope and somewhere along the line of that rope, a hundred feet or so, you have to, you have to put a loop in the rope. And so you just make that bite, about a three foot bite, and you tie a bowline with that bite. The round turn, come up through the round turn, creating a loop, come under the standing part of the line, and back down through that loop. And then slow it down on the dress, and you can pull this all up straight. And we can straighten these circles out a little bit, make them neater. We can dress this knot up nice and neat. So that these, these were twisted and you can just take a little time and you can dress those so they, they just come through there nice and smooth. And then your tail is the same length. So then you can put a carabiner through all three of those. It's very nice. A bowling with a bite. And this is especially easy to untie. With any bowline, to untie it, you go in the back and you break the yoke. You, you push the yoke forward. And that loosens this line, which then loosens your round turn, which is where the knot really cinches down, is on the round turn. And then you can untie this knot. Now we're going to do a bowling on a bite. Might sound confusing. Bowling with a bite, bowling on a bite. A bowling with a bite is you're treating the rope as if it's one rope. And you're also doing that with a bowling on a bite. But it, it changes here. When you come up the hole, everything's the same. You make a round turn, you make a loop. But now you're going to pay attention to this loop. You're going to bring this tail up and around that loop. And then around the entire knot. And keep pulling it forward and get that twist out of that, that line. And then you're going to dress this knot up by pulling that yoke tight. And now you're, you can dress this up a little bit to make it neater. Make those loops nice and neat. And now we have a bowlin. Different from the bowlin with a bite because there's only one strand of rope on the yoke because the yoke was the end of the, the tail. And so it's kind of almost sleight of hand how this occurs. Untie it. So you make your three foot long bite. Make a round turn. Hold it with your left hand. Come up through the round turn with a counterclockwise loop. Now pay attention. You're not going around the round turn. <laughs> You're going around this loop. And then over the whole knot. Pull it up nice. Dress it. And if these, if these end up being a different length, you can actually, by dressing this up here, you, you can lengthen one half because this yoke is a, it's the same line. So you can shorten one of these up and lengthen one of these up, you know. You could have two separate loops if you wanted to. Or you can just dress this up and get them the same length. Ordinarily, you use them the same length in arboriculture because you're going to clip into this 
with a carabiner for some purpose. So that would be another way to make a bowlin in the middle of the line. Now, a word of caution, this tends to cinch up tighter. If you put this under a lot of load, this yoke can really pull up tight here. And this can, and remember that's, that's how you, you loosen the bowlin is by loosening the yoke. So if that, if that ends up pulling up really tight, and you, you have no way to move it. it. It can be very difficult to untie. And one of the advantages of tying a bowling is that it's easy to untie uh, after being loaded. So this particular bowling can cinch up pretty tight. So if, if I'm going to pull pretty hard on this with a piece of machinery or something, then I'm going to choose to tie the bowling with a bite. Because then all portions of the knot have two lines, including the yoke. Let me dress it up. We can dress this a little better. And they can be all the same length. And then this is going to be ordinarily because you got two pieces of rope here, it does not cinch up as tight on the yoke. And you're able to flip this over, bend this back, loosen up the round turn, and get this untied. So there's some uh, practical applications of the bowling. I'm going to show you one more. You know, sometimes when you're climbing in a tree, I, I climb on a single line technique with a with an akimbo device. And sometimes you get way out on a limb and maybe you had to kind of wiggle out there and coming back can be a little sketchy. And so maybe you want a second line to come back on. And you can bring up the tail of your rope you know, if you're running on a single line rope, you got 150 feet of rope. So you have a tail down there on the ground somewhere at the end of your 150 foot rope. If you bring that all the way up in the tree, and maybe you're way out on a limb and, and, and you gotta go all the way back, and maybe your, your primary tie-in point is, is fairly lateral, you're way up in the top of the tree, and you don't wanna risk falling off that limb and taking a big swing. So you can come around a limb with your, with your tail and you get about four feet of line out here and you're going to tie a bowline. Tie a round turn. Take this long tail, I'm going to take a little bit more tail. And we're going to tie a bowline with a long tail. We're going to shorten up that loop. You can come back through here, pull that whole tail through there. Now we're going to tie it, tie the Yosemite finish. Dress this up. So now we have a bowling with the Yosemite finish. And we have, I'm going to pull this around the other side. And so we've got a bowling over here. We're going to tie a Blake's hitch. Now you take your tail and you put it underneath the opposing side of the line. You go twice around your thumb. You're just taking round turns. Twice around the rope. You're going to come up between those two. You've got your long line and the one going to your bowling. You're going to replace your thumb. Dress this up, pull it tight, and this is a hitch. You can, uh, you can run friction on this and position yourself, and you can pull it back up. And if you put a little carabiner in here, it wouldn't be this heavy. 
but you can you can pull this out and you can advance this up just with a carabiner maybe a light carabiner like this these steel carabiners are you know, we have our uses for them but it's generally not on your saddle so if you just have a, a little carabiner in line here you can just advance this knot and move yourself around so you can walk off the end of that limb and then tighten up your other climbing line and just with a tail that you already had you can tie this kind of old school you know work positioning system just out of the tail of your rope by using a bowline and a blade hitch so I hope you enjoyed this video this is uh, the bowline how to tie the bowline and some variations and some practical applications in tree work. Take care. If you like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.